This is the pedestrian detection video management system. On the left side here, we have a camera that is live streaming um, a video of a picture of an astronaut here. And you can see that it is detecting the pedestrian in this picture. And it is displaying the time segments down below. And for every time segment that is red, that means that is detecting somebody. On the right here, this is a video file that is being piped in and it is also detecting the pedestrians on the screen um, and you'll see that I can um, go back and it will I can sort it by the year month day and this shows all the time segments for that day and I can go back in time and see the different segments or I can just go back to live and it shows the live uh, one thing you'll notice is that the the video stream is playing at 30 frames per second, but the um, detection area is only updating every uh, two frames per second. So that helps um, give more time to the image detection uh, processing. So this um, is using OpenCV, FFmpeg, and HLS. Um, tied together using JavaScript. So there's a few steps here. We have the live stream. This um, is kind of your normal live streaming process. It uh, accepts the RTSP stream uh, using FFmpeg and outputs an HLS manifest file for each stream and saves the transport files in a um, folder structure. And then on the browser, using hls.js, downloads the manifest file, then retrieves those transport files <coughs> and streams it to the live video. The historical playback, um, so it stores, ffmpeg stores the transport files in the folder structure, and that's actually just right here. So you see it's year, month, day, and then all the transport files. And if it spills over to the next day or month, it will um, create those folders appropriately. Um, and so that's why the historical playback is available. And the pedestrian detection, so it extracts images from the stream, and does its detection, so this is the OpenCV, and then it will superimpose back onto the output FFmpeg stream. And so um, that is why we're getting the two frames per second, because it is only doing that process two frames per second. Um, and then below we have um, some of the dependencies. This is what I use to develop with. It can be kind of, um, this can matter. Um, and then here's some modules that are important. So one of them being the pedestrian detection module that I created, um, basically converting um, this um, blog post. This is using Python. I converted this code um, to Node. And so it is using this, so it's feeding one image at a time to this, and that's why we're getting the pedestrian detection. Um, and so let's go through the config file. And uh, you see here we can specify the amount of time each segment is, so it's four seconds per segment could bump this up to 60 if you want a full minute. That would make a lot of sense with the um, how it is right here. And then the list size is how many you want before it starts automatically deleting the oldest one. So multiply those together and you can get two weeks or however long you want to have this historical playback available. Um, so this is where you configure each input stream. So the first one is a camera, IP address path, and then these are detection parameters that are fed into the um, pedestrian detection here. And these are described in this um, repo if you want a, more information. But kind of a high level is uh, there's a trade-off between speed and accuracy. You can have it work faster, but it will, might miss some pedestrians. Or you can make it more accurate, but you need more processing power to, to make up for it. Um, and this one is just using a file um, and it just overrides the so this is another camera I have but it's using this one if that is not commented so 
let's go into this one. So it spawns two processes, processes, um, an FFmpeg process, which is right here. So this is the huge FFmpeg command, and it uh, goes into here, and then it spawns another one, which is detecting. So um, right there, that's the command that will extract the images and feed them into the detect um, process. And this is not motion detection or motion JPEG uh, extraction. This is extracting from an H.264 stream. And so it benefits from that compression. And so that's fed into the detect spawn right here. And then detect spawn will output the number of um, pedestrians detected. And then that is later saved into this object, which is made available to the front end to know <coughs> which segments actually have pedestrians in it. So if it's zero, then that, uh, that segment will not be read. If it's greater than zero, then it will be read. Um, so let's look at detect and um, so this accepts an image as I already mentioned and it does its detection and then it writes to output dash detect right here and I'll show you what that is so this is a mostly transparent image that shows the um, detection area and then this is super. This is put on top of the outgoing stream that uh, of FFmpeg, and and that is and that is saved as the live stream and as the historical um, um, transport file. So it always stays with, it always stays with it. Now let's look at main. So this is the front end JavaScript. It's using a HLS.js. Line 39 is the most interesting. This is the event that it listens for when there's a new manifest file available. And it will go through uh, the fragments and it will populate it into the fragment tree. And that is broken down by um, year, month, day. And uh, that is uh, how that is made available. So every time that it gets updated, a new transport is made available. So that's why it will appear on the front end. 